Hi guys, and welcome to today's video on Surface Area and Volumes of Spheres. My name is Darren Mathsguru, and it's really good to see you here. If you haven't already done so, can you do me a favour and subscribe to my YouTube channel? Yes, I know, never going to be rich, never going to be famous, no one watches maths videos. But by clicking that subscribe button, you just let me know that you're watching, and I'm actually doing this for a reason, rather than talking to myself. And there is also mathsguru.com, which allows you to sign up uh, for free and find all of the uh, videos by textbook, by chapter, there's downloadable notes, exam questions, and so, so much more. So, what are we doing today? Well, understanding what a sphere is, wonderful, understanding what a hemisphere is, and knowing how to use the volume and surface area of spheres and hemispheres and composite shapes uh, to sort of answer all that funky math. Now, I know that sounds a bit weird, but this is building on all the stuff that we have done in previous videos, all on mathguru.com, and in fact, in school. So if you can understand how to use a formula, if you can understand how to use your CAS calculator to solve formulas, you should be a gun at this. Okay, so recap, as I say, we've got two more shapes to look at. This is part of the year 10 advanced course, and one of them is a sphere, and the other one is a hemisphere. Now, you guys know what spheres are because I'm sure you've kicked a soccer ball around, or a football, as I call it, from the United Kingdom, although I live in Australia. Yes, but you also are on some massive sphere called the Earth. Well, again, not strictly speaking true, because interestingly, this sphere isn't actually a circle. It's more sort of squashed. It's a little bit elliptical. Again, whole new discussion. For everything we deal with in maths, uh, tend to think of it as a sphere, particularly further maths in year 12, where we do a lot of time and longitude and latitude that all deals with a, the Earth, funnily enough, um, but uh, we have to make sure that it's circular. Okay, so what is a hemisphere? Well, if you've eaten your breakfast out of a bowl, then you've had a hemisphere, because yes, a hemisphere is effectively half a sphere. Now, in terms of volume, that is freaking awesome, because if you remember when we did things like cylinders and we cut them in half, then volume's great, because if we can find the volume of a cylinder, we can find the volume of half a cylinder really, really easily by just halving. It's the surface area that you need to be very, very careful with, with some tricks and stuff, but that's coming up shortly. So first things first, what is the surface area of a sphere? Now again, be very careful. It's very hard in a 2D thing to be able to draw a sphere, but we can draw a shaded circle. So obviously, if a question says sphere, make sure that you know that's a 3D object and has its own formula. So do you need to know where the formula for the surface area of a, area, area, goodness, I've come from New Zealand. A surface area of a sphere comes from, nope, not at all. Thankfully, not like the last video where I seem to spend like nine hours explaining where the surface area of a cone came from. This one we're just gonna accept is four pi times the radius squared. Well, that's awesome. So the only thing, again, we need to know for a circle is its radius to help us find all of that funky stuff that we actually need. Okay, so let's use an example, right? So we've got the theory, let's use an example. Find the surface area of a sphere of radius seven centimeters. Now, as you can see, I've put here some very helpful little hints for you in terms of formulae. And so find the surface area of a sphere. We know that the surface area is given by four pi times radius squared. Okay, so four times pi times radius, which is seven squared. Now, obviously the question says correct to two decimal places. So we're gonna to need to use our calculator for this. And so firing up my CAS calculator, let's put it in the main mode. Now, obviously I'm using the Casio class pad. If you have the text as TI Inspire, that's fine. Same, same really. So what am I gonna do? Bring up my keyboard, I'm gonna do four times. Let's see if my finger does that properly. Yes, times seven squared I know is 49. And hit enter, and that gives me the fabulous value of 615.75 centimeters. And remember, in this situation, it's squared because we're working with a surface area. Area has floaty two, and we knew that the radius of this thing was given in centimeters. Now, what about a volume of a sphere? Again, it seems weird, isn't it? Because this is just a formula. Bang it in your summary book, off you go. Life is good. Volume of a sphere in this situation is given by four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, now pi r cubed again. What's the only thing we seem to need to know there? The radius, absolutely. So volume of a sphere, put it in your summary book. Really, really important. But to help me, I've got a piece of it there. I've got it there. So find the volume of a sphere. Again, find the volume of a sphere of radius seven centimeters. Same sphere. Let's now just find the volume. So the volume is given by, what do we say? Four thirds times pi times my radius cubed. Okay, so four thirds times pi. So radius is seven, so seven cubed. Two decimal places tells me I've got to use my calculator. Otherwise I would have it in exact values and that's no use to me. So we don't want exact values in any way, shape or form. So firing up my calculator, uh, <clears throat> let's do a fraction four 
thirds pi times, I don't know what seven cubed is, so I'll do seven cubed like that, gives me one, four, three, six, point seven, six centimeters, and in this situation, cubed. Why is it cubed? Because it's a volume, and a volume must be cubed, and again, same units as centimeters. Now, obviously, there are tricks, tricks, and more tricks, yeah? So, you could probably ask yourself, well, if it's just two formulas, how does this get any more complicated? Well, they can actually do things backwards. And one of the big tricks with maths, and this is a warning to anyone out there for maths, don't just learn the maths forwards, try and learn it backwards, um, is that they can actually give you a volume or a surface area and ask you to find the radius, yeah? So, don't always think it's the case that it is, um, all right? So, the question is, can you transpose a formula? If you're good at uh, patterns and algebra, and have taught about things about how I'm doing and unpacking stuff, you'll be a gun at this, all right? But otherwise, you can use your CAS calculator. So I'm going to do it both ways just to show you. And it says find the radius of a sphere with volume 10 meters cubed. So they give me the volume. So the first thing is I've got to make sure that I use the right equation 4 thirds pi r cubed. So I'm going to do this by hand first, yeah? Volume is 4 thirds pi cubed. This situation, so as I always say to my groups, formula substitute and then solve. So I've written my formula down. Now I'm going to substitute in the values they've given me. They've given me the volume. So under the V, I'm going to write 10 is 4 thirds times pi times radius Q. Now obviously radius is the one I want to find. So that means I have to get rid of this 4 thirds and pi. Now, again, if you're good at transposing formulas, if you understand the basics of patterns and algebra, you'll understand that between that four thirds and pi is a kissy kissy, is a times. And so that means that I can move everything to the other side and make it a divide. I can undo it. So basically, I'm now going to divide both sides by four thirds pi. And when you divide one side by four thirds pi and it's got four thirds pi in it, it disappears. So that's basically now going to give me r cubed on its own. And that's going to be 10 divided by 4 thirds pi. And actually, believe it or not, two more stages, bang that in the calculator. Now, because I want to get rid of this floaty 3, yeah, we don't like the floaty 3 there. So how do I undo a floaty 3? Well, I cube root. Because that's a cube, I cube root the other side. So my value of r is now going to be given by the cube root, the floaty 3 there, of 10 on 4 thirds Pi. Can I do that in my head? No, I should go, go, I should not, I cannot, I cannot. So let's fire up my cast calculator, he says, trying to look for it. And there we go. So how do we do this? Well, we use the correct functioning. So in this situation, I've got to use that button, which allows me to put the three in. And then I'm going to put a fraction and do 10 and divide it by. And the great thing about these cast calculators is I can do another fraction. So that's four on three and then move it over and then pi. And then when hit enter, out comes the fabulous value of r as 1.34. Now, why is it 1.34 uh, meters in that situation? Well, meters, because it's given us meters cubed and it wanted it correct to do decimal places. Okay, so that's given it by hand, that's transposing, really important skill. <clears throat> what about using the CAS? Well, I've already got a CAS screenshot there, so I can take my CAS down there. But again, to be able to do these questions, you still have to do the formula, you still have to do the substitute. The calculator does the solve thing for you. So if I was doing this question, I still have to write V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. I still have to substitute in the value of 10 equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, the rest you basically hand over to your calculator. Once I've got that formula, I put a bracket, I put the word solve, and I put a comma, and I put the letter R, and I close my brackets. Now, if you remember, solve tells a calculator to solve. You have to put in a full equation, including the equal sign, a comma to tell the calculator there's the end of the equation, and the letter R to say to the calculator, that's the letter I want you to find. Obviously, if I've put R in my formula and I put an X there, your calculator is going to go, excuse me, huh? What? You're not making sense. All right, so obviously take out the X and put the R there. And as you can see from my calculator screenshot, out came my value of 1.3. Four. Okay, so using the CAS can make our lives a lot easier, but unfortunately for methods and for sort of for harder courses, you've got to be able to transpose. You've got to practice and get that skill sorted. Now, composite shapes, we know what a composite shape is. It's basically a shape what is made up of other shapes, yes? And so now we can have volumes of all of these exciting stuff that we've had before. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, the composite object includes a hemisphere and a cone as shown. Find the surface area rounding to two decimal places. Okay, so let's see the surface area of that shape there, right? Well, 
We've got to find the surface area of the hemisphere and we've got to find the surface area of the cone. Now in the previous video we've dealt with cones, so I could write here the surface area of a full cone is pi r squared plus pi, he says, r s, where s is my slant length. Now this is obviously a challenging question because they haven't actually given me the slant length, but that's okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. So the surface area first, let's do the surface area of the hemisphere. So I'll change that to s a, H for the hemisphere, and we know the surface area of a hemisphere is half of the sphere, right? So if we know we've got four pi r squared, I'm gonna divide that by two, because that's the half of the whole sphere, which gives me two pi r squared, and so that becomes two times pi times the radius. What is the radius of this thing? Well, it's trying to trick you. It love these questions. Do you notice what's happened? It's told you the height of the whole shape is five, it's told you the height of the cone, uh, sorry, the height of the whole shape is seven, the height of the cone is five, which means that actually this height here is two, and that's actually the radius. So again, you see what, just tiny little tricks they use here. So the radius now becomes two squared, that becomes two times pi, oh, it says two times pi times four, which gives me eight pi. Now at this moment in time, I'm gonna leave it as an exact value. Why? Well, I'll get my calculator to do all the hard work later. I'm only gonna round my final answer. And exact values work for me now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that was the hemisphere. What do I do now with the volume of the, sorry, the surface area of the cone? Well, the surface area of the cone, so SAC, is given by, now it just wants the curved bit. So if you remember, we won't need this pi r squared bit because that's not one of my surfaces. So I now need to do pi, times radius times my slant length. Well, I've got pi, I know my radius is two, but I don't know my slant length. So then we go back to what we did in a previous video, and if you remember, we would have to use pi there because we've got a right angle triangle. We know that this is five and that is two, and that means we can find s as my slant length by saying that s squared is equal to five squared plus two squared. So s squared is equal to 25 plus four. So s squared is 29 and s is the square root of 29. And again, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I don't need to have all those decimal values because my calculator will deal with square roots, thirds, it will deal with pi's, it is fine. So there we go, so the surface area of that now is given by pi times two times the square root of 29. What do I do now? We'll add them together. So my total surface area is gonna be eight pi plus two pi times root 29. Can I do that in my head? No, I can't, so I'm gonna fire up my cash calculator. So we've got eight pi plus two times pi times the square root of 29. Hit enter, gives me the value of 58.97 centimeters and squared. Why? Because it's an area. And now we obviously move to the next section, which says, well, now can we find the volume of this shape? Yes, we can find the volume of this shape. Thank you very much. What you notice now, I've got all of the measurements there. So uh, find the volume. Volume's much, much easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the volume of my hemisphere, which is half of the volume of a sphere. So I'm gonna do a half of the volume of my sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So uh, multiplying that out gives me, one times four gives me four, two times three gives me six, times pi times my radius. Well, we still know the radius is two, so that's two cubed. Four on six is the same as two on three, times pi times two, four, eight. And that's gonna give me eight times two is 16 on three pi. Now again, if you haven't followed what I've done there, slow the video down, stop it, rewind it. That is there for you, because it's now involving fractions and pies and and cubes, and, and you've got to be guns at this stuff. You've got to be able to see it and go, yep, I can do this. So that's the volume of my hemisphere, which is the half of the volume of the sphere. What about a volume of a cone? Well, again, from a previous video, we know the volume of the cone is given by one third pi r squared, and in this situation, h, which is the vertical height, not the slant length, the vertical height. So the volume of that is given by one third times pi times the radius, which is still two squared, times the height which is five, so that's one third times pi, two squared is four times five is 20, so that's gonna become 20 on three pi, so therefore my volume is gonna be 16 on three pi plus 20 on pi, uh, 20 pi on three, which basically we can do that again in our head, which will give me 36 
pi on three and firing up my CAS calculator, he says, trying to find the button. Yep. So let's do a fraction, 36. He says, type in 39, my fat fingers. Uh, divided by three gives me the great value of 37.70 to two decimal places, centimeters and cubed. So as you can see, this is just about finding the right parts of the formula and substituting them in and, and just, I don't know, using your calculator for the good stuff, yeah? Obviously this points to your understanding. There's no point using a formula if you don't understand where it's come from. And I keep saying over and over again, the curved surface area of a cone is actually pi r s. The whole surface area of a cone is pi r squared plus pi r s. So knowing which part of those deals with the circle, the, uh, the curved surface area, is critically, critically important. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm done for this lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Really good to see you. Uh, as I've asked at the beginning, if you can uh, sign over or subscribe to my YouTube channel, that'd be greatly appreciated. He said not being able to speak this morning. And uh, if you can head over to massguru.com and sign up there, it's free. But you can find all these videos by textbook, by chapter, by downloadable notes, exam questions, and lots more to come. All right, uh, I hope you're staying safe and well. Um, I'll sign off now. All right, take care. Hopefully see you in another video. Bye-bye.